Morning, church. It's really an honor to be able to <clears throat> lead our minds around the table this morning. And I'd like to start off with a passage of scripture, which we find in the book of Mark, chapter 6, and this is from verses 30 and 32. The apostles then assembled Jesus and reported on all they had done and taught. This is Jesus talking now. He says, Come off by yourselves, let's take a break and get a little rest. For there was constant coming and going. They didn't even have time to eat. So they got into the boat and went off to a remote place by themselves. Kind of sounds like us, doesn't it? You know, we go and live our lives and come together from time to, from time, to time and report on all that we have done. You know, we kind of stay so busy doing work stuff and uh, meeting our sport and recreational requirements that on many occasions we don't even have the time to be able to partake of this, this meal on a Sunday. And I think Jesus would have probably, you know, say the same thing he said to his disciples. He says, come with me to a quiet place and let's have some rest. And that's what we, we're doing this morning. You know, humans need rest. Um, you know, we seem to have been made being tired of fine art. Uh, we know how to wear ourselves out. Uh, without meaning, we seem to be living a life at a pace that leaves really very, very little time for physical rest and almost no time for the soul rest that Jesus was encouraging. And it appears to be one of the characteristics of our age and our culture. You know, a lot of times we almost celebrate in having no time to do anything and being, and being tired. You know, we go on elaborate and expensive vacations, hoping to find rest, only needing a week to recover from our vacation. We work hard day and night. We are sleep deprived, stressed out, tensed up, drained, and thinking that one day we'll eventually find a place in life where we can stop the madness and have a rest. But as we all know, that seldom comes. Come to me to a quiet place and get some rest. With these words, Jesus revealed that he knew his disciples very well. Our tired faces, weary bodies, and worn out spirits reveal that Jesus knows us just as well. You know, most of us would agree that um, overworked people with overloaded schedules, uh, overbooked lives, is a bad combination. Um, it's bad for our physical, for our mental, and most importantly, our spiritual health. Do you know that the fourth commandment is the longest of the ten commandments? And in this context, being it so long, God said more about taking a day off than he did about committing murder or adultery. And it seems like this is something that he wants us to take seriously. He wants us to take a day off. It's important to understand that this was a commandment in those days. It wasn't a suggestion. Now, Sabbath means day of rest. And God says every seventh day we did take time off. In Mark 2.27, Jesus said that the Sabbath was made to benefit man. And it's important to note that Sabbath keeping is, is for our benefit. It is for our, our own good. You know, the purpose of the Sabbath is to preserve health and to obviously prevent burnout. Now, we all know we don't keep a Sabbath like the Jews did, but it's obviously very important for us to have a day of rest, to recharge physically, emotionally, and most of all, spiritually. We need to set time aside to rest for recreation, for restoration, renewal, and worship. It is the way God made us. You know, David speaks of finding rest in, in Psalm chapter 62, and Jesus reminds us in Matthew 11 that he knows we need rest. And from those two passages of Scripture, there's three very important messages that, that emerge from them. And the first one is that real rest only comes from God. Jesus said, I will give you rest. The psalmist said, truly my soul finds rest in God. My salvation comes from him. We may search for it in other things and in other places, but real rest, real refreshment of the soul only comes from God. And the second one is, God is able to handle our, our load. The psalmist said, power belongs to you, God, and with you, Lord, is unfailing love. Jesus said, all things have been committed to me by my Father. Since he has all the power, our problems, our questions, our struggles, our hurts, our weariness is never too much for our Father in heaven. 
And the third one is Jesus invites us to find rest for our souls. And I come to me, all of you are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. It's a very clear message from Jesus. You know, once a year, we celebrate Father's Day. You know, for some, that is a glad and easy celebration. For others, it's perhaps a day mixed with sorrow and regret for a relationship that once was and that is now gone, or for a desired relationship that perhaps never was. And that makes worship on Father's Day you know, easy for some and difficult for others. So whether your Father's Day is perhaps a glad one or perhaps a sad one, we must always find the object of our worship to our Father in heaven to be of greater glory than any possible earthly relationship. This meal we are about to partake of now is a time for us to be quiet, to have a little bit of mental help, help us to rejuvenate our relationship with our Father in heaven, and as we remember Jesus' death on the cross for us. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we just give you thanks for allowing us to gather together as your children to remember your son's death on the cross. We thank you, Lord, for this time of rest, for this time when we can renew our spiritual lives, to renew relationships one with another, and most of all, Lord, just to, just to give thanks for your, your tremendous love for us. Thank you so much for each and every one of us. Thank you for your son, Jesus, and thank you for the emblems that we are about to partake of. Please bless our bodies, and we just thank you so much for this glorious day. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.